Hi again. Uh, this is the same little capacitor that I had on the uh, the bridge before, the one uh, that I made, and it has a value of uh, around uh, 3,400 picofarads. Looks like it's shifted a little bit as I've been playing with it. Um, but I said that uh, it was helpful to have an odd number of plates. Remember when I cut the plates, I cut 13. Uh, so that give us uh, an interleaving of uh, plates of six and seven, and um, I'll show you why that's uh, why that's interesting. This is a, a sensitive instrument, and if I approach the capacitor, look at the needle. Um, there's nothing happening there; it, it's not moving. Uh, if I touch the capacitor, you'll see I get a deflection. If I touch the other side, I get quite a huge deflection. Okay, but as I approach it from the side, essentially there's no movement. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the capacitor. I'm going to put a flag on that side, so as you can see, that's the wire that I've disconnected from this side. And I'm going to turn the capacitor around. So I'm connecting it up the other way. The value of the capacitor should be the same. And, uh, yeah, you say that's reasonably that's uh, that's the same value. But now, as I approach the capacitor, so you see I get that deflection. Remember before go back. So what's actually happening is that series of plates that have got the most in them uh, is acting as a screen. So just turn that off. And if we open this up, we'll see that this first layer was acting as the screen and on both sides it's like having uh, if this is the earthy side of the equipment so we've got the earthy side of the capacitor um, screening the inner side and uh, that's helpful if it only if it was like that then it would be sensitive on one side and not on the other uh, they do the same thing with variable capacitors and on this one there's an odd number of plates. I'll zoom in. Okay so this is uh, uh, a variable capacitor. Uh, the dielectric is air, there's uh, no insulation in there and if we look at this We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, fixed veins, and we've got ten. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. We've got ten movable veins, and um, it's a, let's say the advantage that you get in this case is. If the capacitor is moved, I don't know if I can get this, I'm pushing the uh, the shaft that way on the knob on the end, I'll show you. Here, look at the gap there, it gets larger. Um, but if you look at the gap at this end, it gets smaller. So, uh, although in normal use this, this capacitor wouldn't be pushed in and out, it wouldn't matter if it did. The designer's taking care of it. Is uh, uh, it's it's a, a little embellishment that uh, is just there. Is uh, it's probably made a lot of capacitors, and he's found that if he uh, didn't have an uneven number, then you know maybe he got some problems, and the capacitance varied if the bearings weren't very clever or, or, or some uh, pressure was applied to it. Anyway, just thought you might find that interesting.
And just in case you think that's a one-off, there's another radio receiver capacitor and you'll see that there's an odd number of plates. There'll be an odd number on one side and an even number on the other so that the outer plate is always embracing those on the inside if that makes sense and uh, again there's uh, another one and you've got the same the same feature you will come across um, capacitors that have even number of plates um, but as a generality you'll they will have an uneven number of plates on one side to the other. So by having a different number of plates on uh, one side as compared to the other, uh, this, uh, this one uh, set of plates can actually be used to screen the inner set of plates. It's just uh, a little feature of capacitors that's uh, probably not normally explained. So. I hope you find this interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.